We are going to see how to calculate the electric field and potential in cases of cylindrical symmetry in this lecture. Let's begin with the simplest case, that of a line which is carrying charge per unit length lambda. To calculate the electric field at a distance r from this line, let's take a cylindrical Gaussian surface going through the point where we want to calculate the electric field. From symmetry, we can see that the electric field is going to be perpendicular to this particular surface of the cylinder, which is parallel to the axis of the cylinder where the line sits. So writing down Gauss's law, along this surface, E dot dA is just going to give us E times this surface. For the capping surfaces, we find that the electric field is going to be perpendicular to the area vector dA. So we are going to have E dot dA zero for the capping cylinders. This tells us E comes out of the integral. We only need to take E times 2 pi R times L, which is the area of the Gaussian cylinder. That should be equal to the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. The enclosed charge in the cylinder is the line charge density lambda times the length L of the cylinder, lambda L over epsilon naught. Solving for E, we get that E at a distance R from the line should go as lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r. Now, how do we generalize this to a charge that is distributed over a solid cylinder? Let's begin by thinking of a solid cylinder with volume charge density lambda. And we want to find E at all points r, where r is the radial distance from the axis of the cylinder. Let's begin by taking r to be greater than capital R, which is the radius of the cylinder. To calculate the electric field at a point a distance r from this, we draw a Gaussian cylinder of radius r and length l. We assume this is an infinite solid cylinder, but our Gaussian cylinder is finite, it has length l. So once again writing Gauss's law, which is E dot dA is equal to enclosed charge over epsilon naught, what I get is E times the surface of the cylinder 2 pi r l is equal to rho which is the volume charge density times the volume of the cylinder in which the charge lies which is this cylinder over here so it's going to be rho times pi r squared l over epsilon naught so solving for e we get e is equal to rho times capital r squared l over 2 pi epsilon naught r times l. But this is just the charge per unit length lambda. The l's cancel. So this is just the same expression as we had got on the previous page for the electric field outside a line charge of linear charge density lambda. So in this case, what we are saying is that lambda is related to the volume charge by being volume charge times surface area of the end cap of the cylinder. Now let's do the case where R is inside the cylinder. Once again, this is a volume charge density. To do this, we take cylindrical Gaussian surface of radius little r and length L. So this is little r now. R, we assume that this cylinder goes on forever. And but our Gaussian cylinder is finite. Writing Gauss's law, E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. The left hand side is going to give me E times the surface area of this Gaussian cylinder 2 pi little r L. Once again remember we don't need to worry about these end caps because the electric field from symmetry is going to be such that E dot dA on those end caps gives me zero. The electric field is parallel to the end caps. This time, the enclosed charge is only the enclosed charge that is inside this cylinder over here. So it's going to be rho, the volume charge density, times the volume of that Gaussian cylinder, which is pi r squared L over epsilon naught. So E of r is going to be then rho. The pi's will cancel. One factor of r remains. The L's will cancel rho r over 2 epsilon. So this is for r less than r, e of r is equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r, which is equal to in terms of rho, 
rho times pi r squared over 2 pi epsilon naught r. This is rho capital R squared over 2 epsilon naught r for r greater than r. And you can see when little r is equal to big R, I'm going to get exactly the same expression. This will give me E of R is rho R over 2 epsilon naught, which will match this too. Having calculated the field, we now want to find the potential everywhere outside a charge distribution that has cylindrical symmetry. Let's begin again with the line of linear charge density lambda. And if you recall from what we did earlier, the electric field everywhere at a distance r from the axis is going to go as E of r is lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r. Now to find the potential at a given point, what we want to use is the definition of the potential difference between two points in terms of the electric field, which is given by this formula over here that if I'm going from point A to B, the potential at B minus the potential at A is the negative of the integral of A to B of E dot dS. That is to say, it's the negative of the work done per unit positive charge as I'm going from A to B. Now, you notice that I say V of R for all R. And in the case of a point charge, when we did this, we had defined our potential to be zero at infinity. Whereas here, I'm not going to choose that for reasons that will become clear shortly. I'm instead going to use some reference point and define the potential V of R as being the difference between the potential at point R and the potential at that reference point. So let me call my reference point point A. So I'm going to call A my reference point and I'm going to say V of R then minus V of A is the integral from A to R of E dot ds. Once again, this electric field, which I had drawn here, if I were to write it as a vector relationship, it points in the radial direction. So e dot ds, as I had argued for the point charge case, is going to be just e times dr. If I take the projection of the displacement, infinitesimal displacement ds along the radial direction, I'm just going to get the infinitesimal radial vector dr. This can now be calculated, this integral, by using this formula for the electric field. If I replace that in here, what this is going to give me is minus A to R of lambda dr over 2 pi epsilon naught R. If I take out all the constants from the integral, this gives me lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught integral from A to R of dr over r. Now what is this integral? 1 over r dr, the integral is just the natural log. And you can see why I didn't want to choose my reference point to be infinity now, because if my potential goes as the natural log of the radius, then natural log of infinity is infinite. So instead I pick some reference point a and this is then going to give me negative lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught natural log of r minus natural log of a and I evaluate this integral and you know the difference between two natural logs is the natural log of the ratio. If I take the negative sign into account this is going to give me finally v of r lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught natural log of e over r. How do we repeat this if I have that charge instead of being over a line smeared over a cylindrical volume with volume charge density rho? If I'm outside, it's going to be just the same. If I'm inside, how do I find v of r inside? Recall that e of r is going to be rho r over 2 epsilon naught for r less than r e of r is equal to rho times pi capital R squared over 2 pi epsilon naught little r for r greater than equal to r. So to calculate the electric potential at a point r that is inside the cylinder, what we want to do is 
define it relative to a suitable point. Because I have two different expressions for E inside and outside the cylinder, let me just, in order to use just one formula for E, define it relative to the surface of the cylinder. So I'm going to define V of R minus V of capital R, where V of capital R is the potential at the surface. This is going to be negative integral from R to little r of E dr, where E now we can use this expression over here. So this is going to give me integral negative capital R to R of rho little r over 2 epsilon naught dr. This is no longer logarithmic. So this is going to give me rho over 2 epsilon naught integral r dr from capital R to little r. So with a negative sign, what I'm going to get is r squared over 2 between capital R and little r. So this is going to give me rho over 2 epsilon naught r squared minus little r squared over 2 or what this becomes is and this is the potential relative to the surface of the cylinder.